So uh, let back on professors and I want to start my presentation by expressing my gratitude to the to you, to the members of jury for your feedback on my research and also Professor Walsh, who guided me through this research over the last uh, basically three years. Uh, since I have very limited time, I will provide a brief overview of my research and I will cover three main areas. First, uh, start with the background of my research in a few slides, then briefly summarize the outcome, including theoretical contribution and finally, I will detail the practical recommendation to management practitioners and next steps and limitations. I have uh, started my research at a large uh, multinational financial institution uh, with the objective to understand how the performance management of the company could be improved. Uh, during this research, I have followed uh, the grounded theory research process, and this led to the discovery of a counterintuitive managerial behavior of blurring employee goals. Um, subsequently, I have defined my research question to understand this behavior better and help companies mitigate this behavior. So I set up the research question as uh, what forces drive the managerial blurring of employee goals. Uh, setting specific uh, goals is a long-standing practice of companies worldwide that is supported by wide range of research and practical evidence. And still, I found that only 25% of the goals I uh, investigated at this company would be considered uh, specific. And for certain reasons, managers do not follow the accepted and proven best practice of goal settings. Um, this is a very significant discrepancy, it has significant implications because the time and money invested in this process and the loss of performance and uh, 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 performance and motivation of employees. Uh, the benefit of goal settings has been uh, described in a broad spectrum of literature going back uh, over 100 years, but still it was uh, uh, defined and consolidated by Locke and Latham in a goal setting theory. Uh, the goal setting theory says that uh, performance increases if employees are presented with a difficult and specific cause instead of a generic or, or no goals. A goal setting theory is one of the most important uh, motivational theories and is rated number one among uh, 73 management theories. So it's a quite well researched and important theory. And still, one of the key, key ingredients of this theory goal specificity is much less researched because uh, most of the research focuses on the relationship uh, between goal and performance and also the moderators and, and the mechanism of, uh, of the theory. So this research, my thesis, uh, focuses on goal specificity, specificity and a certain antecedent uh, to goal specificity. Um, I already mentioned that I followed a grounded theory uh, methodology in my research. And my research had three main uh, data sources, the literature, the qualitative investigation, and the quantitative investigation. The literature, uh, for the literature, I covered motivational theories and performance management, conducted several bibliometric analysis in a, a gradually focused uh, matter and uh, finally conducted a theory landscaping review. For the qualitative investigation, um, I conducted altogether 43 interviews. I analyzed, coded and analyzed these interviews using grounded theory methods um, and then consolidated uh, the results. On the quantitative investigation, I had access to uh, the performance management database of the company that included 13,000 employee goals. Uh, demographic data, employee data, and different data on departments and functions. I use this data and analyze this data by using different methods and different tools, uh, SPSS, uh, JMP, and machine learning tools. I have uh, followed the critical path in the grand theory and produced the outcomes expected in this theory as defined by Glazer and Walsh. And uh, that resulted finally uh, uh, the outcome as 
the main outcome de described uh, in these books. So the manager's main concern, the core category, and finally, uh, the grounded theory. So moving on um, to, the, to the actual theory, you can see a graphical presentation of the theory. Um, and you can see five fundamental forces uh, influence the manager blurring of employee goals. And these are goal orientation of the managers, the performance management structure, the desire for flexibility, the position profile and conflict avoidance of, of managers. The balance of these forces result in a certain level of blurring of employee goals, which in turn defines the specificity of employee goals. And as we know from the goal setting theory, the specificity of employee goals uh, uh, results in a certain level of employee performance and motivation. The model also identifies uh, a mediating factor of performance management alternatives, which uh, are employed by managers in case of the specificity of goals are compromised, and they rely on these alternative tools to still reach uh, a high level, a higher level of employee motivation and, and, and performance. Since um, but there is very limited time, I will briefly scan through the five key forces. Uh, just a brief uh, summary. So goal orientation uh, of managers influences uh, manager behavior during the goal setting process and is driven by the manager beliefs, experience and training uh, in terms of uh, goal settings. And it basically defines uh, how much the, the manager is willing to follow the proper way of goal setting. The performance management structure is another critical factor that is driven by uh, company policies, the HR practices, and the IT system employed by the company. And here, the, the key elements of this are the compensation structure, the transparency provided in the process, and the resulting uh, goals, uh, and, and also how the process is actually set up. And that would include, for example, quality control steps or the timing of the process, and other simple parameters like number of goals uh, defined. The desire for flexibility is a managerial desire for higher level of flexibility during the goal setting and evaluation process. And um, is driven by uh, reasonable changes in the environment uh, between goal setting and evaluation, um, dependence on other departments uh, and individuals when delivering the goals and employee influence also when fulfilling uh, the goals. If uh, uh, this flexibility is not provided, then managers rely on, on blurring uh, goals in order, not, in order not to penalize themselves or their teams. And I also observed another factor here, which is the fairness feelings by manager that is driven by the above factors, but also driven by uh, a certain fairness feeling related to employee social status or, 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 or financial situation, for example. The position profile is um, a collection of more objective reasons influencing the level of blurring, and it's mostly driven by the quantitative analysis of my research. And that includes uh, uh, the profile of tasks uh, performed by the employee and the objective set uh, to the employee and uh, the profile of the organization and the employee. It's more of a, uh, a certain organizational profile, meaning the level of uh, organization level compared uh, from the CEO and such. And finally, another very interesting uh, uh, factor of force is the conflict avoidance of managers. Uh, I find in this research that during this uh, goal setting and evaluation process, a lot of pressure is put on managers and the pressure comes from employees, comes from their team, uh, uh, and also comes from company culture. And uh, this pressure uh, is, for example, from employees is mostly based on organizational justice feelings of employees that could be procedural, distributional, or interactional. Uh, so the five forces that uh, defines the level of blurring that occurs on an individual level and individual goal level, goal level defines the level of specificity of the goal uh, resulting in the end of the process. 
And as I mentioned, uh, as already defined in the goal setting theory, but also proven in my research, has a large implication on employee performance and motivation. Uh, so this theory, in fact, uh, uh, the importance of this theory lies in the identification of this managerial behavior, which is uh, an antecedent to goal specificity, and mostly in a sense of reducing the specificity of goals, therefore compromising employee performance and motivation. Uh, so this uh, this. Uh, uh, presented uh, theory corresponds or extends uh, the goal setting theory. And you can see in this picture that the shaded are goal setting theory. Uh, the unshaded is the, my research and the link between the two is the specificity of goals. If we uh, move on to theoretical contribution of uh, the research, so, Number one is uh, importance is the identification of this behavior uh, that is quite important uh, in, in management science that reduces the specificity of goals and therefore, thereby limiting the effect of the goal setting theory. And uh, explaining this managerial behavior and understanding the managerial behavior also helps, it, uh, helps uh, us to mitigate it. And since uh, goal setting theory is considered one of the most important management theories, and it's so widely used, uh, this uh, has, research has an importance also, not only in the theoretical field, but also the application of the goal setting theory. The research confirms two areas of pre previously identified relationship in the goal setting theory. One of them is the relationship between goal specificity and uh, performance. The other one is uh, uh, that outcome goal types are more specific than process goal types. Uh, this was one of the variables I used in my research and it was proven as previously already stated in previous researches. And the other important factor is the identification of highlights of a mediating effect of alternative performance management tools. But as, as I mentioned, this is kind of an alternative way for managers, if the specificity of goals are compromised, they rely on uh, kind of building an alternative performance manage management for themselves or relying op on daily operational management to achieve high performance and motivation. And finally, uh, using grounded theory research in this field is, uh, as I, went through the researches is, is not a usual way of approaching this. And so I think it's a, it's a contribution to use this uh, approach to identify a new uh, uh, view of uh, a new area of goal setting research. In terms of managerial contribution and uh, recommendations, uh, the research uh, could have quite significant implications and it's uh, driven by both uh, the cost or investment side or the, the impact side. Um, since 95% uh, of the organizations actually are using goal setting uh, in their organization, there is significant money time invested in this process. And also on the benefit side, companies employ this because they uh, they expect that uh, uh, they see a return on the performance side. So if the effectiveness of this process is compromised, then the return, uh, what is compromised is quite significant. So once we have identified the key forces driving this behavior, we can address each of these forces individually and find ways to recommend to target those. So we could add many recommendations for each of these forces, but I listed only the most important ones that I, I thought that uh, would be most applicable based on my experience. And uh, what you can see on the page are the five most important uh, recommendations. And obviously when applying these recommendations in a practical sense, uh, you need to consider the individual case of a company since performance management is a favorite subject of boardrooms and many innovations and trials and errors in this area. So each company is a little bit different of what process they uh, employ. So the going through the recommendations, 
<clears throat> we have um, discovered a, a legitimate need for flexibility by managers. And if we could uh, allow this flexibility, then we could reduce uh, this uh, negative behavior. And uh, here I propose three ways to allocate more flexibility to managers. And one of them would be to allow managers to uh, write and rewrite goals uh, easy, easier than currently uh, in, in generally in corporations. Allocate bonus pools uh, to managers that makes uh, comparisons to other departments irrelevant. And finally, to move to a more frequent goal setting. Uh, uh, we see this uh, move in many corporations worldwide. For example, with agile management, uh, these companies have been moving to the quarterly goal setting. Um, on the second point, uh, research has shown uh, the managers are forced uh, in a sense to blurring due to conflict in the organization. And uh, if we could uh, limit this conflict or eliminate this conflict, that would also help uh, to limit the blurring of goals. So I also propose three ways uh, to have this. So first uh, I propose to eliminate self-assessment. And uh, there are many research that actually shows that um, Self-assessment is uh, not working very well and it's biased. And uh, for example, one research showed that 80% of employees claim that they are in a top 10% performance of, of the company. And using self-assessment in a way uh, opens up a gate uh, for a conflict uh, between managers and employees. The second is uh, compensation questions. So new research showed that 10% of employees uh, make an outside contribution to performance, while the 90% is performing as an average. And this basically uh, questions the traditional belief of a bell curve uh, performance. And there are many research that actually uh, sets a, a new approach to this. So I propose in this uh, recommendation is to have a separate bonus pool for this 10% of overperformance and a separate bonus for, for the 90% of the uh, average performance. And finally, I propose to separate uh, rating decision from compensation decision. This research also shown that uh, managers often use very different uh, allocation criteria that is not based on uh, the ratings of the employees. Uh, that could be, for example, salary levels compared to the market or compared to peers, or, or could be uh, factoring in the teamwork of the employees. Uh, the third main point is the quality control in the process. And that would assume that uh, uh, we could measure specificity of goals. I propose a methodology in this uh, in this thesis, which is quite labor intensive. So uh, it should be automated. And I'm in a work in, in a way of working on a machine learning method to actually automatically assess the specificity of goals. And this would be a great quality control measure in the process to assess this. And finally, uh, or the number four is improving the feeling of fairness among employees. Um, uh, this research has highlighted that the feeling, feeling of fairness uh, in employees is an important reason by employees to putting pressure on managers. And if we in, improve this, either on the procedure or distribute, distributive or allocational side, then they would li limit the pressure on, on managers. So the above recommendations are also uh, approaching this, but it could be other tools, for example, in the procedure or justice to uh, have more flexibility to change goals or limit the time. And finally, the importance of aligned communication in terms of expectation in all channels to managers. And since the time is running out, I have one minute left. I would move on the last uh, page on limitations and further research. Obviously, the limitation of this research is uh, uh, this is based on one company culture in one country, although the, the, the usage of a best Best uh, practice performance manager management is quite universal. It's been shown by research that is uh, driven by national cultures. So expanding this research is significant and could be validated uh, in other localities and so on. And also now we have identified this behavior. We could, we could use other methodology like surveys, questionnaires, uh, uh, quantitative research to address uh, these issues. 
So my time is exactly one second off. So thank you very much. And I would conclude uh, this presentation and um, I'm open to questions. Thank you.